This episode is brought to you by Communications Training for Coffee Teams, a new Mapper Forward workshop tailored to get your team communicating more confidently to improve general mental health as well as business profitability. Click the link in the show notes for further details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode three of our five-part series with Diego Barreona. Diego, we are talking about the private auction that you are going to be offering for the first time for Los Pirineos. And today I would like to ask you, what are your views on private auctions? Ooh, <laughs> well, it's very, very positive for sure. It's an exciting, how to put it in a simple way. It's a really exciting way to explore new and different ways to offer and sell coffees, basically. Uh, it's a great way to discover price. You can find out how your coffee is valued different ways to discover quality as well. Um, it's a great way to get creative on how to brand your, your coffees as well. Mm-hmm. And I think it also brings a lot of value to, to origin in this case of Sabolder. So when you say it brings a lot of value to origin, what kind of value do you see it bringing? It's like putting the origin more on, on, on the map and mm-hmm. getting to, and, and roasters in the world seeing the, the quality in different varieties that are growing in the suburb there. It just looks like a like a microscope lens on the on the origins. Like, oh wow, this is really interesting. It's, I guess it gets more more attraction to, to to origin. When an auction like this happens, I mean obviously you're doing it for a bunch of benefits and and it's not just about, hey, let's make a shit ton of money. Yeah. But it's sure. it's also about a whole bunch of other stuff especially when it comes to someone like you making a decision like this. I know you've got five or six reasons behind why you want to do something like this. What benefits, um, what do you expect to see the immediate benefits are going to be and then the flow on effects uh, for the business, for your team, for coffee producers across El Salvador? What, What does something like this, how monumental is it? One, I guess, would be people who are going to start, like, I, I tell people that this country, we need to be focused more on quality and, and the volume. So having this auction, I feel like people are going to be more uh, motivated to, to, to run these events and be more quality oriented and be able to offer the copies at a better price and more profitable as well. Um, and second, um, one of, I, I would say the, the number one catalyst of why Los Pirineos is Los Pirineos and my father became a legend that he was, is because mm-hmm. of Cup of Excellence. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cup of Excellence, I will say, played a really important role in, uh, in Spiranels and, and created an international brand and, and awareness. Mm-hmm. So it, that's, I will say that's really important to participants to see that the the, uh, the effect that this auction can, can have in, in, in many farms and, and, and producers. Well, it just creates this like billboard is this uh, platform of, uh, of, of who you are and your qualities and your, and your copies. And is the hope that other producers get encouraged by this and decide that they want to do their own private auction? Yes, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I don't do it because I want to be just the first one. I want to be the first one to start the, the ball movement. Move, movement, yeah, movement. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think when it comes to coffee pricing, that this is a way to shift the model away from the C market and those kinds of things. Is that one of the things? Yes, I'm so tired of people <laughs> asking to me about the C price. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even, it, I'm going to be very controversial here. I don't even care about it. Like, it just makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Maybe because I don't come from a, from a really, really like long time coffee production background. Like, and for me, it makes just no sense. How can people just price something that takes a lot of work and labor and just put it on the on the on the on the stock price and just like be affected by, by factors that are not in the hands of, of us producers? It just makes no sense. This is the kind of thing that really excites me about the future of coffee producers is when a generation comes in that is educated in a whole bunch of different stuff, right? Yeah. And wants to merge this complex agricultural, the production of this complex agricultural product with technology and tools and, you know, perhaps AGI 
uh, mm. artificial general intelligence and and all that kind of stuff like merging all of those things together to drive a new generation of producers into a whole different industry and make such bold statements like that that I hear from producers all the time I don't care about what the C price is other than everybody benchmarks what my coffee is starting there mm-hmm. and to be <laughs> fearless and say I want to disconnect myself from that yeah, it made no sense that it's like, even though I feel like in the specialty coffee world, it's something mentioned in it. I'm like, why are you mentioning that in this world? Like, I don't see why it's you know, like, sometimes they, they both blend in in a way. And mm-hmm. I, I have had a lot to learn still, but like for me, for now, it makes no, no sense. Why are we using that as a reference sometimes? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there are a lot of historical reasons and it's the exchange yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff, but if we, given that we've reached a point where there's so many producers that don't want to be beholden to the sea, we have to have an alternative pricing mechanism exactly. for coffees that don't make sense to be benchmarked against the sea. And that's a big part of what's going on here with this auction is you saying, I want to take responsibility for the pricing of my own coffee. Yeah, it's pure and also just pure disruption and trying to be different. I always want to be different. I told my, my teams, let's be salmons in the, let's, let's go upstream. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. flow upstream. And, and yeah, the, yeah. yeah, let's I, be different. It, yeah. Again, I can't relate to any of that behavior at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, poor little me, not at all. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to doing something like what you're doing, and when we're looking at the benefits, what do you think your team thinks the benefits are for them? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I was talking to my uh, my my copper and my team, copper and water control, and he was so excited because he he's taking this so so seriously. Like he's so excited about, about like about the, the laws and the coppings. Hey, it's like hey, let's do this. So he just sparks this. Um, creativity and more sense of purpose in the team as well because and it's I, something that we're going to do from zero it's completely ours zero for ours and you don't have anybody that's done this before you in el salvador so that's what's i mean that's the being a pioneer there's a drug associated with it folks and like <laughs> <laughs> there's this beautiful kind of i don't know what how you describe it, like literally not knowing whether success or failure is going to be the end result, but a group of people coming together to create an event, whatever that event is, but to create that together and know that the success or failure of it rests on the team, all of us. And I'll I'll be honest with you for sure. For sure, this uh, excitement for, I guess, for a financial result, for sure. I'm going to lie to you. There's, it's exciting. It's exciting for sure. It needs to be. Yeah, for sure it's exciting. But it's not what we're we're in a dream because we want to make a lot of money and we, we want to be like the process that the Panama can get for sure. Like we are not dream by that. We just need to create our own thing and be creative, be unique in mm-hmm. star movements. That's for me. That's what's driving me. Let's start movement. Let's be different. Would you say that the number one success marker for the event is selling all the coffee? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. W- what would you say is the success marker after that? Uh, for uh, next year for example or for no in this auction right okay yeah like goal number one we sell all the coffee goal number two i'll i'll go before one would be to sell a lot of i mean i mean a good amount of sets of uh, sample okay. sets that'll be number one let's sell some sample sets and and then i will say get a good awareness going on get people to, to join the auction final uh, objective sell all the coffees Okay, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a famous question that we ask yeah. in every meeting uh, at Mapper Forward. Like, what are the success markers by the end of this meeting or the project? So, yeah, go ahead. Because I feel like sometimes, I mean, let's say we, we, we are here and we want to mm-hmm. get here, right? Mm-hmm. But we forget about all this, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the auction is right here still. Yeah. I, I want to get in the future, you know? Yeah. Because I guess better prices, bigger uh, uh, participation. But for this to happen, I've got to build it slowly here, hopefully, you know, and and be really patient with it and slowly, slowly, slowly grow to to it. 
And the intention, this becomes an annual event, right? Yeah. I, I think if, if this goes well, I would love to do it every single year. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Now that we've talked so much about like the how the auction got put together and why we're doing it and and by when I say we I mean the Los Perineos team not me and and folks just for clarity Los Perineos is not a client of mine Diego is a friend um, and this is he is an open door policy for him uh, anytime he wants to talk about anything on this podcast is an open invitation and this was a perfect example of of that so uh, I just want you to know this podcast gets nothing from it. Uh, we are not supporting other than just cheering them on um, in this. So in the next episode, we're going to have kind of a breakdown of the general information that's going to be uh, a part of, you know, a yeah. part of the auction. So so let's, let's uh, so we'll see you in the next episode, folks. <laughs> Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.